Welcome to part 4 of let's build a thermal power plant. In this episode, I am going to cover how to make this turbine boiler setup that you are seeing on your screen. In first 3 part of this series, I discuss how to make a cobblestone generator and how to convert all of the cobblestone into solid fuel. It's now time to put all of the solid fuel to good use by feeding it into the boilers. Now I know this episode is a lengthy one but I promise you it is well worth it as you will end up with an extremely satisfying and quite beautiful build for your world. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So we start this build by choosing a direction which is perpendicular to the output of our fuel factory. Once you have that direction, come out 27 by 27 blocks in an L shape and then place down your first temporary block. Now from this temporary block, we are going to build a rectangle and the rectangle is going to be 25 by 16 blocks in dimensions. And be very specific about this size as our turbine setup depends on it. So from that very first block, start making a 25 by 16 rectangle. There we go. So before we move any further, once again just double check the size. The length should be 25 blocks and the width of the rectangle should be 16 blocks. There we go. Now that we have this rectangle, we are going to divide it into 4 equal parts. So leave a 5 block gap and then on the 6th block place down a temporary block. And repeat the same process 2 more times. So now we have three dividing pieces which makes the rectangle divide into four equal parts. Extend all of these lines till the very end of the rectangle and there we have a rectangle which is divided into four equal parts. Now make four similar rectangles like this leaving a one block gap between them. And I have color coded them as red and blue as they are mirror images of each other or the turbines are going to be a mirror image of each other. So in this way make four rectangles with four gaps or basically four partitions in them. Now we need the steam turbine projector and the alternator projector from immersive engineering and immersive technology. So the way the projector works is that it will display a holographic image of the turbine or basically any part that you want to place and by pressing the middle mouse button you can rotate it by 90 degrees. So for this red section here make sure that you have the red part facing in front of you and then shift right click in order to place this. This only works in creative by the way. Now let's come to the blue part. These turbines need to face each other. So what we are going to do is rotate the turbine by 180 degrees so that the red, pass, red part is facing us again and place down another turbine. So now both of these turbines are facing each other. In order to complete these turbines, let's now place the alternator. So in order to place the alternator, make sure that the black portion or the coil portion is facing the shaft. And then again, shift right click. So what you need to remember is that the light engineering blocks, they need to be away from the turbine, not facing it or basically touching it. Now for the other side, rotate the alternator by 180 degrees and place it down like this. So these are two turbines placed. Now in a similar manner, place down 14 more in this same orientation. Do not change this orientation. Basically all of the turbines should be facing each other. So once you have placed down all of the turbines, they are going to look something like this. Now it's time to form the turbines. And in order to do that, you are going to need the engineer's hammer. So taking the engineer's hammer, right click on the central most shaft and that will form the turbine. And do that for all of the turbines in order to form them. So with the turbines formed, now it's time to form the alternators. And in order to form the alternators, right click on the center most light engineering block. So with this, we have formed all of our turbines and the alternator blocks. Now the output of these turbines is going to be in RF. So we need RF to HE converters and we need a total of six for each turbine. So place down your RF to HE converters on all 6 of the alternator slots like this. Now in order to get the power out of these blocks, we need red copper cable. So connect the red copper cable going down like this and make sure to extend one copper cable in the direction where all of the turbines are going. So basically just extend one cable like this. 
Now as we need to repeat this entire process for all of the turbines, simply copy this entire section here, stand in the middle and type in slash slash copy. And now simply we can paste the entire thing for all of the turbines. And as we extended one cable block, it will directly connect to the another or basically to its neighboring turbine. So now paste the entire build for all of the turbines and do the very same thing on the other side as well. And also don't forget to connect the cables in the middle as there is going to be a three block gap in the center. So that's the other side done as well and now not to forget the center most cable blocks in order to connect it all and there we go so with all of the turbines connected it's now time to place the boilers there is going to be one boiler for four turbines and in order to place the boiler come to the center most line of four turbines and from this line come out by five blocks and on the fifth block place the boiler the boiler is going to be from industrial renewal as it looks pretty good and it has a decent GUI. So there we go. This is one boiler placed and if you count, there is going to be a three block gap between the start of the boiler and the end of the turbine. Now place down three more boilers for all of the other remaining turbines. So we are going to have four set of boilers and 16 set of turbines. Each boiler will run four turbines in total. And there we go. We have completed the boiler turbine setup. Now as this entire thing is looking, well, a bit odd, I'm going to change the entire flooring to concrete blocks. Now this step is optional and you can change it to whatever you would like to. I'm just going to leave a three block spacing behind the boilers and the turbines and going to make the entire floor turn into concrete from HBM Smart as it looks pretty good. So here we have our point one which is three blocks away from both the turbines and the boilers. And on the diagonally opposite corner, let's get the other point as well. So here's our second position. And now simply with set HBM concrete, you can convert the entire sand block and all of the wool into concrete blocks. There we go. And as you can see, the contrast is pretty amazing. The gray concrete blocks and the reddish steam turbines and alternators, they are looking pretty good. All right, so now it's time to get the steam out from the boilers into the turbine. And for that, we are going to use the fluid pipe from immersive engineering and fluid valve from industrial renewal. Now in these boilers, the steam comes out on the top slot, which is the orange one like this. So take out two blocks or two pipe blocks on the top and then bring it out until they are at the very beginning of the turbine inlet. Then extend the pipe to the sides and bring them down connecting to the steam turbine. And do the same thing for all of the four turbines. Leaving a high enough clearance will allow you to place down other pipes that we are going to require in the later part of this video. Now break the centermost pipe block and place down a fluid valve but make sure that the valve is facing the correct direction. The arrow should be going from the boiler to the turbines. Like this. So that is one boiler turbine setup done. Now in a similar way, do the same thing for all of the four or all of the other three remaining boilers. And once it's done, it is going to look something like this. So this is the boiler output done. Now in order to run the boiler itself, we are going to need the firebox. And for this purpose, we are going to use the solid fuel firebox. Just right click with the firebox on all of the boilers and it will be attached directly. There we go. Now, as soon as you attach the firebox, you will see that there is no fuel and water. So let's change that. First things first, we are going to make a fuel inlet for all of the four boilers. So place down a chest in the very most center and then we are going to use the vacuum signal unplated impulse duct. 
and make sure that it is the vacuum signal amplated because the path that the fuel needs to travel is a very long one and if the fuel doesn't reach in time the temperature is going to drop significantly so start connecting all of the item ducts by bringing them three blocks up and running them parallel to the steam pipes that we placed before so your item duct if you placed it correctly will come one block down from the steam pipes that we placed once you have reached the end of the second boiler just connect it or connect the item duct in the following direction and remember that the firebox only connects in one direction with the item ducts there is no other connection that you can possibly make so that is one side of boilers done repeat the same process for the other side as well with the other side done the entire plant will start looking something like this it is starting to shape take shape now now in order to give a redstone control to the fuel output i am going to place two servos and then extend two redstone line with a lever in between flicking this lever on and off will make sure that fuel gets into the boiler or not now three blocks away from the base that we made start making a 7 by 7 square of concrete blocks or any other block of your choice basically now once you have the 5 by 5 space in middle dig out that 5 by 5 space by two blocks or three blocks whatever you'd like to i'm just going to make it too deep and here we are going to make our water input now i know that this much water is not enough for a large scale thermal power plant but as i'm in creative i can do that if you want more realism then you can basically place your pumps on any natural water source like an ocean or something like that but i am going to use a 5 by 5 water body like this and now we need to get pumps from industrial renewal so place down two pumps on each side of the reservoir like this and make sure to leave a one block gap between them it will look better or it will look good in this manner so with this we have total eight pumps two of the pumps will power one single boiler therefore we have eight pumps in total leaving a one block gap dig out a five by five space and in this five by five space we are going to make the power generation for all of our pumps and this is going to be accomplished using thermoelectric generators from immersive engineering now for the thermoelectric generators to work you need alternating temperature sources on all of its faces so make two diagonal lines of pack dice and lava and then another two on the remaining diagonal corners like this now on top of these thermoelectric generators place down the industrial floor from industrial renewal now industrial floor is an interesting block as it allows cables to go through it so place it down and then you can connect the cables by right clicking them with it and then get the cables one block out and finally cover all of the other open blocks using concrete tiles as well now you can make this as uniform as you want to so now once all of the four cables are out we are going to use each thermoelectric generator in order to power the pair of pumps so one thermoelectric generator will power two pumps so connect them in such a manner that no two cables should intersect with each other and the entire cable system will actually look pretty cool so there we go now all of the four pumps are powered and they can pump out water in order to get this water out connect the top of the pumps with the fluid pipes from immersive engineering and bring them all the way back into the boilers so that's one set of pumps done and if we take a look at the boiler you will see that the water gauge will go up pretty quickly now for the other set of pumps you will need the engineer's hammer because when you will try to bring this pump out by block it will connect with the other set of pump and we don't want that so make sure that no two pumps are or basically a pair of pump is not interacting with another pair of pumps and bring this another pipe to the second boiler that we have so that's one side of both of the boilers done repeat the same process for the opposite side as well and in this way we are going to water all four of our boilers 
once the entire thing is done it is going to look something like this pretty cool in my opinion now place down any energy storage block on the opposite side of where we place down our water pumps and in order to monitor this i am going to use energy control mode now monitoring this is not important but i like to do it and in this manner i can also show you the entire output of this plant so with the hbm sensor card in now we will be able to see how much energy our plant is producing now in order to produce energy in the first place or produce power in the first place we are going to need fuel to get into our boilers so we are going to take the fuel from a fuel producing factory and bring it to the fuel inlet of our steam power plant so get another set of vacuum signal lamp ducts and make sure that the ducts are not connecting with each other basically the inlet duct should not be connecting with the outlet duct and making sure that the inlet duct is also not basically being hindered by any other block just connect the fuel producing factory with a turbine boiler set there we go now if we use the proper servo we can transfer entire stack of fuel at the same time so i'm going to use the resonant servo and if i flick this lever on entire stack of fuel will be transported at the same time so here i have basically taken in nine uh, nine entire stacks of fuel into our input chest and now if we turn this lever on four pieces of solid fuel will flow into each of the four boilers now as soon as the fuel reaches the boiler you will see that the firebox will start heating up heating the boiler up and the temperature of the boiler will start going up now until this temperature doesn't reach 100 we are not going to produce any steam so while we are waiting for this process to happen i am going to automate or four of the valves or the control valves that we placed for controlling the steam these valves are going to control whether steam can flow from the boilers or not so for this purpose i am going to use the toggle remote control block from energy control mode Now I have made an entire video on energy control in case you want to check that mod out. It's pretty cool. So once the temperature has reached 100 degrees Celsius, you can either toggle all of the levers manually or you can use energy control to do that. And once steam starts flowing in, once the valves are open, all of the turbines should start spinning. Now these turbines need to reach the maximum RPM or the optimal RPM in order to produce the maximum amount of power that they can. And it takes roughly 30 seconds in order for them to spin up to that RPM. Now once 30 seconds have passed, you will see that the power levels will go up until they reach their maximum, which is 49,152 HE per ticks. Multiply this number by 20 and you will get roughly 1 million HE per second. Now that the turbines are actually rotating, they are spinning, they are also producing exhaust steam. So all of that steam is being converted into exhaust steam. And as this episode has already gone for long enough, in this episode, we are just going to dump that exhaust steam into the fluid trash can. So connect all of the turbines, the front part of the turbines from where the exhaust steam is going to come out and connect it all into a single fluid trash can. And repeat the same process for the other set of turbines as well. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. A lot of effort did go into this build, so let me know what you guys think of it.